Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, and we're continuing our series of interviews with Heiner Flassbeck, who now joins us from his home in Germany. Heiner was the director of the Division on Globalization and Development Strategies at the UN, known as UNCTAD, and he's co-author of the new book, Against the Troika, Crisis and Austerity in the Eurozone, which he wrote with Kostas Lepovitsis, who's now a new member of parliament in Greece. Thanks for joining us again. So on President Obama's recent State of the Union, it really struck me the way he's sort of bragging about how the U.S. economy is adding jobs while Europe is not, and essentially that we're all right, Jack, and he seemed happy with that. Europe's sinking into recession. Japan's in recession. He's more or less bragged about the destruction of the Russian economy. Uh, some people suggest that the, the Americans and the Saudis are helping uh, facilitate that process. It's not just all market forces to do with low price of oil, but the Saudi decision not to uh, cut back its oil production uh, certainly helped facilitate this uh, you know, $40 oil, which is killing the Russian economy and, of course, the Iranians and the Venezuelans and even the Canadian dollars going down the toilet. Um, so uh, how, what's, what, what's Obama got to smile about here? Well, I think it's, it's uh, well, he's, he's the, the best of many weak uh, economies uh, so far. Well, smile or not, uh, but this is not uh, a big performance that the U.S. economy shows. Uh, if you look at the, the fourth quarter again, it was very weak. Uh, you had a better quarter before, but then... Uh, the first quarters, the first half year was also rather poor. So overall, well, it's not it's a, not a great performance. But uh, uh, among all the others, it looks it looks uh, quite good because the others are so bad. Yeah, the uh, one-eyed king in the land world. of the blind. But but that being said, yeah, how 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 long can the American economy be? You know, sort of. It's, it's not an island. It's totally a, a, a meshed with Europe and the rest of the world. If the rest of the world's in recession, yeah. how long can the U.S. not be so affected by it? Well, that's a very open question. Uh, uh, much more is the question: uh, how much Japan and, and how long Japan and Europe can go on like this. Again, um, very difficult to answer, but uh, the U.S. can clearly can clearly uh, go along for some time because the unemployment, the official unemployment rate, is uh, is down a bit. Uh, but uh, I think the overall picture is extremely fragile. If you look at the December uh, incoming orders in industry, were extremely weak. Everybody was frightened. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, what we looked at a bit more carefully. Uh, the overall hourly nominal, nominal hourly earnings uh, of uh, all employees in the United States, you find a long series of numbers that are all close to 2%, close to 2% since uh, 2008 or so, so it was a nominal increase, and this even went down in December to 1.7. So uh, this is not uh, a strong economy showing there. And this, despite all the uh, the instruments that were used, quantitative easing, uh, very low interest rates, uh, stimulation of the government in the first round, and so on. So this is not a super economy. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, as you said, uh, one-eyed in the land of the blind. But um, uh, so um, the whole, the global economy, I think, is very fragile and can uh, come down so to say, every minute. And, and what we see in the oil markets and the currency market is all quite frightening. Uh, I think in the oil market, uh, we should not underestimate the uh, the point that I made for many, many years that we had financialization, that we had speculation with uh, commodities. You see, we have no slowdown in all commodity prices. This financialization has gone because the players see that they do, cannot earn the, the returns that they expected in the commodity markets. The market is very complicated and uh, the super cycle didn't show up, so uh, they all went out. Uh, there's clear evidence that the financial players all are out of the commodity market now. So this is, for me, the main reason for the oil price falling. Uh, but and you see, as I said, in other commodities as well. For the, for the dollar-euro, uh, again, this is a very, very uh, dark uh, chapter of uh, globalization. Uh, the euro was quite strong up to the beginning of last year. Now it's down by 20%. 
this would be a big problem for the U.S. The, the U.S. deficit will grow again. The trade deficit will grow again, uh, definitely. And Europe has already uh, quite a bit of a surplus, and uh, the surplus will will go up. So they, these are all totally unsettled questions. And you look at the BRICS or the developing countries, again, you have so much fragility uh, that uh, any time uh, whatever shock comes, the, the world economy can uh, go down quite quickly uh, again. The... Uh the destruction of the ruble, or the was it 45, 50 percent down and uh, drop in the ruble, and and the weakening of the Russian economy. It seems to me this is extremely dangerous, both economically but also politically. What, what might happen in Russia, uh, and, and and Obama's kind of bragging about it. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think uh, they are underestimating the the whole how important the whole of Eastern Europe is. It's not just Russia. Russia is. Uh, uh, was up to uh, last year still a, a rather strong economy among the Eastern Europeans. If you look at Ukraine, Ukraine is a, a plain disaster economically, not only in terms of war and peace. Uh, it's economically a plain disaster. Uh, many other countries in Eastern Europe that are former, were so former allies of the Soviet Union are, are in, in in very bad shape, in very bad shape, even those that are members of the European Union. So there is, is a lot of uh, explosive uh, in the making, so to say, in these countries. And uh, uh, nobody should sit down and uh, say uh, he's happy about uh, that these people get uh, a lecture, so to say, in terms of good behavior. Uh, that doesn't make sense. That's not something that politically should play a, a role. But... Uh, we, we should see that in this globalized world, whatever shock occurs, be it Lehman or something else, or Greece or whatever, what do I know, Russia, uh, can uh, can uh, bring uh, fire to the rest of the world and uh, with very, very bad consequences for everyone. The uh, uh, Obama seemed to have been suggesting uh, over, over the last couple of years that, you know, I remember a particular quote of his where he said, there is money in Europe, they should use it to stimulate. Uh, but that, that that does not argument does not win the day in Europe. Yeah, that's right. But this is due to ideology, mainly German ideology, namely the ideology that you should not uh, uh, you should not accumulate any kind of debt. The German Germans are happy to be savers everywhere. The German households are savers, private households are savers, public households are savers, net savers, and even the companies are net savers. So everybody's a net saver. This German German people consider to be a, a good. Uh, uh, so to say, uh, prove that they are behaving in the right way. This is uh, clear, clear nonsense uh, in uh, macroeconomic terms. Uh, and um, so this is the ideology. There is a lot of money around, and the German government could get money uh, for nothing uh, from the capital market, a lot of money for nothing, and they should take it and invest it because investment is, is down in Germany, and they should invest it in all over Europe. All over Europe should invest. Uh, France should invest. They all could do it at very low interest rates. Uh, it's just this foolish uh, ideology uh, that we should not, nobody should be a debtor in this world. Everybody should be creditor, nobody a debtor, which is clearly nonsense. And with the strength of the Republicans, in, at least in Congress, who knows what happens in 2016, they, they more or less share the same ideology. Yeah, that's great. Then the whole world will be uh, a creditor to uh, the Venus or the Mars or the Moon. I don't know. <laughs> then we have to find a creditor. We have to find a uh, debtor. Sorry, we have to find debtors uh, into interstellar debtors, uh, but uh, there are no debtors of this world anymore. But you see, the, the fact that we have uh, zero interest rates or negative interest rates is is the result of uh, the fact that there are, no one wants to be a debtor. Everybody wants to be a creditor. That doesn't work. Uh, you cannot have creditors without debtors and the other way around. You cannot have debtors without creditors, but uh, the creditors always believe that they are the uh, uh, the good guys and the others are the bad guys, which is, uh, as I said, plain nonsense. Now, I mean, China has enormous clout in all of this now. Uh, what, what, what is their point of view on all of this? They're, they, they're holding tons of American dollars, which are appreciating. On the other hand, it's not going to be in their interest to see global, the whole, a global meltdown. Uh, are they playing any more? What, what role are they playing here? Well, that, well, you say they have done their bit uh, in reducing their surplus. They, the Chinese have understood that they couldn't go on with this huge surplus forever. 
Now the surplus is much lower. It's much lower than the German surplus, for example, which is something for a country of 1.3 billion people compared to 80 80 million in Germany. So uh, their surplus is lower than the German surplus in absolute terms. And uh, how they have achieved it by increasing wages, by, by allowing higher wages and the government stimulating higher wages through um, higher minimum wages that were really set by the government. So uh, this was an absolutely reasonable way out. So, so they're defending the, the peg of the currency to the dollar, but they allow a real appreciation. That they allow a reduction of competitiveness, uh, and uh, this has allowed to bring the surplus down. So they are not in the focus as they were 10 years ago. And that's something that's... But, uh, but let me let me add, the, yeah. the Chinese will never will never become a, a debtor because a debtor would mean to be dependent on the international capital markets that the Chinese will never allow. And the whole of Asia is trying to avoid it. But everybody is trying to avoid it. You see, the Latin Americans are also trying to avoid to become uh, a debtor because the debtor is... Uh, is always the bad guy, and the get debtor has to call the IMF in sooner or later. And so, uh, if you want to avoid that, you have to be a creditor. But unfortunately, not everybody can be a creditor. So, where does where does all this end up? Well, this is ending up uh, what we see now in kind of currency war that everybody tries to depreciate what is also uh, logically impossible, as uh, well as the debtor the creditor story. Uh, so we, we're running uh, against, uh, well, logical barriers, so to say, call it logical barriers or whatever barriers it is. And this is something where we were, where the world economy was in the 30s of last uh, century, uh, when we call this competitive devaluation or, or currency war and so on. Uh, this is this is a bit what we have now, and all the talk about free trade are uh, nonsense and uh, wonderful uh, TTIP, uh, the free trade uh, agreement in Europe and, and uh, US is, is not worse. Uh, the paper is written on if uh, the euro is going to, to depreciate further because uh, this will be a big loss for the Americans and the Americans would be crazy to agree to any kind of free trade, uh, not including not including the value of the currency. But uh, you see the value of the currency for the US on the other hand is... Uh, it's not something they want to talk about, about because then the question comes, so can we leave it to the market? And that's what the American definitely want. They want to leave it to the market because Wall Street is, uh, Wall Street is making a lot of money with it, trade and currencies. Uh, but you see, sometimes uh, if you allow your people to have good business, it's bad politics. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, Heiner. You're welcome. Bye. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. 